let's imagine that you're working in the regional hospital where samples from patients with skin, lung, and gut infections are waiting to be tested. Given your remote location and limited resources, there are not many diagnostic tests that you can run. Microscopy coupled with the Gram staining technique is a powerful combination for microbial identification. All you need is a light microscope and some common chemicals and dyes. We will cover the steps involved in Gram staining, the basics of operating a light microscope, and how to combine these two skill sets in clinical diagnostics. The gram stain relies on the proportion of peptidoglycan, a carbohydrate complex found in gram-positive versus gram-negative bacterial cells. Gram-positive bacteria have a thick peptidoglycan layer on top, whereas the peptidoglycan layer in gram-negative cells is much thinner and sandwiched between layers of membrane. Gram-positive and gram-negative cells retain dyes differently and will stain different colors by the end of this process. We begin by cleaning the work area with 70% ethanol and igniting the Bunsen burner. Turn on the heat lamp so that the platform warms up. Next, add a drop of water onto a microscope slide. Then pick a bacterial colony from the clinical sand to smear into the droplet of water and homogenize. Place the slide on the heat lamp. Wait until all the water is evaporated and a dried smear is visible. Apply crystal violet to the fixed sample and incubate for one minute. This covers the top layer of both types of bacteria in a deep purple color. Wash off any excess crystal violet with water. Apply the water from the top of the slide and let it run down. Next, we apply iodine and incubate for one minute. This bonds the crystal violet to the peptidoglycan and gram-positive bacteria, but will not be effective for the thin layer of peptidoglycan found in gram-negative bacteria. Wash off any excess iodine with water. The sample is then washed with ethanol, which will remove the outer membrane from gram-negative bacteria. Wash off any excess ethanol with water. The final step is the saffron and counter stain. As before, we apply the counter stain and allow it to incubate for one minute. This stains gram-negative bacteria with a pink color. It's not visible in already stained gram-positive bacteria because the crystal violet is too intense. Wash off any excess stain and dry the slide. It is now ready for imaging. Samples for light microscopy are usually on a transparent surface and have a light shone it from underneath. Light first passes through a condenser designed to focus light onto the sample. The light then travels through an objective lens. These lenses control the magnification and how much light passes through. The final lens is the eyepiece or ocular lens, which brings the image into focus. The eyepiece is what you use to visualize your sample. Make sure that it is clean and spaced comfortably to accommodate your eyes. The objective lenses control the magnification of your sample. The level of magnification varies greatly between lenses and the larger magnifications require immersion oil. The condenser controls the amount of light allowed into the sample, whereas the light source determines how bright that light is. There are two types of focusing dials on these microscopes. Rough focus is used at low magnifications to quickly bring a rough outline of the samples into view. The fine focus is for small adjustments, fine tuning and improving the clarity of the image following the initial rough focus. You want to maximize the chance of seeing something in your initial setup by zooming out as much as possible and making a sample as bright as possible. Wipe down the eyepieces and lenses with Kim wipes and ethanol. Set the objective lens to the lowest magnification. Bring your stage all the way to the bottom. Turn on the light, set the brightness to max, and fully open the condenser. Place your slide on the stage with the lens and light aligned onto your sample. These won't be your final settings, but are a good starting point to see something down the eyepiece. To bring your sample into focus, use the rough focus style to quickly bring a rough blurry image into view. Next, use the fine focus to sharpen the image. Use a half turn of the fine focus in each direction to determine which way to turn the dial. Avoid using the rough focus after this point. Only use the fine focus. The rough focus will drastically affect the clarity of the image and may even damage the objective lenses when it is this close to the sample. It will be difficult to see bacterial cells at the lowest magnification. Swing in the next highest magnification lens and use the fine focus only to increase the clarity of the image. As you switch between objective lenses, remember to not use the rough focus or shift the position of the stage. If your samples were visible under the previous magnification, these new lenses will swing into the correct position. From this point on, just use the fine focus to adjust as necessary. The high magnification objective lenses usually require immersion oil on the slide to visualize the sample. Apply a drop of oil on the slide and move the lens into place. There should be a diffraction of light as the lens hits the oil. Use the fine focus to increase the clarity of the image. Once oil has been applied onto your slide, you cannot view your sample under non-oil immersion lenses. If you need to go back, you need to wipe the oil off and start the imaging from scratch. For gram-stained bacterial samples, we will use oil immersion microscopy for the highest magnification to visualize the small bacterial cells. We can see here what some of the results look like. The gram-positive culture is Staphylococcus aureus. It's a deep purple color and the bacteria also have a cocci shape. The gram-negative culture is E. coli. It's a light pink color. The bacteria also have a rod shape. 
Similar to the living world is seemingly invisible to us, but once we zoom in, we can see microorganisms that are not visible to the naked eye. The combination of bacteria's gram status and morphology can direct clinical diagnosis and expedite treatment. All it takes is a light microscope and easily accessible chemicals coupled with your skills and knowledge.